Our next speaker, ladies and gentlemen, is Mr. Wusik Jiong. Mr. Jiong is the general manager, Stamping Tool Engineering, Shin Young Company Limited, with an experience of more than 25 years in the field of stamping press. He is involved with die design, process design, simulation, die development, simultaneous engineering activity, and he is in charge of skin parts, structural parts, and steel plots. Ladies and gentlemen, please get your hands together for Mr. Wu Sik Jiong. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my great pleasure to be allowed to make a speech here. My name is Wu Sik Jiong from Xinyang in Korea. The topic that I'm going to talk to you is hot forming press, uh, sorry, hot press forming and aluminum stamping. First of all, I'd like to introduce my company shortly, and I will move on to hot press forming for ultra high, strength, high strength steel sheet and uh, tooling for aluminum alloy sheet. Xinyang uh, was established in 1973, and in and in 2013, Xinyang obtained quality five star and technology five star from Hyundai Motors. And 2014, Xinyang was selected as the best new stamping tool supplier by Ford. And 20, 2018, Xinyang was selected as a tier one supplier by BMW. Xinyang, uh, Xinyang has 11 production plants for automotive body parts, six in Korea, and one in Russia, and two in China, and two in US. And also, Xinjiang has three stamping tool shops in Korea, and the number of employees are totally about 3,000. Our stamping tool shop is specialized in skin parts such as side outer and fender and moving parts such as hood, trunk, and doors. Also, Xinyang has many experiences in aluminum alloy and high strength steel and hot press forming. The following, is, uh, the following table is our end users around the world for stamping tools. Let's, let's move on to hot press forming for ultra high strength steel sheet. This is a uh, content. Body structure development trend. What is hot press forming? Hot press forming technical application and Xinyang's hot press forming parts. First of all, let's look at the uh, automotive industry paradigm from the view of body structure. Currently, due to the global warming and environmental destruction, environmental regulation is being reinforced as time goes by. And this environmental regulation leads to force OEMs to reduce exhaust gas. Also, oil price is constantly increasing during the several decades. And crash performance is emphasized by customer and government. Due to these surrounding conditions, our future cars are and will be focusing on eco-friendly and safety. Okay. So, what should be done to make eco-friendly and safe cars? Car weight should be reduced while the strength of body structure is intensified. To do that, we need light and strong material. To only reduce car weight, we can use aluminum alloy, magnesium alloy, or plastics. However, to satisfy light weight and strong strength at the same time, the only answer is to use 
high strength steel and ultra high strength steel. The latest technolo technology using this material is hard press forming. What will be the feature of ultra high strength steel used for hard press forming? As you, ca as you can see in the graph, this material has very low elongation and very high tensile strength. Because of this, formability is really not good. And it has high spring back tendency after forming. Therefore, to make up for these weak points and secure high strength, hot press forming technology has developed. From this point, I will explain about hot press forming in detail. Let's look at the graph on the left. To make HPF part, Firstly, material at room temperature is placed at here. Uh, can I? Yeah, the, this button? Yeah. Ah, okay, okay, I see. I'm sorry. Mm. Yeah, a bit more. Sorry. Okay. Firstly, material at room temperature is placed at here, the red, red area. Okay. Uh, yeah. When uh, this material is put in the oven to be heated up to 900 degrees, you can see that the austenite point, it would become soft and it has good stressibility. After transferring by robot, the heated material is pressed formed and quenched in the dye. And the material would have very high strength. Because heated material is quenched in the closed dye, the spring back will be reduced a lot or uh, there will be no spring back. The chemical components of HPF material are as follows. By adding boron, the material can have high performance in quenching. At mechanical property, before a hot stamping, the material at room temperature, it has tangent strength of 600 megapascal and 25% elongation. And when heated up to 900 degrees, it has 100 megapascal and 60% uh, elongation. After hot stamping, uh, after quenching, the material can have 1,500 megapascal and 5% elongation. So it becomes much stronger than before. This image, uh, sorry. This image is our hot press forming line. In front of the line, the blank loading system is installed. To the left side, uh, there is a heating furnace called the oven. And the following is hot forming press. I will show you some movies. The blank is picked up by robot and marked by marking punch. And loaded onto roller to go into oven. And I will show you the next one. Oh, sorry. The heated material is centered by a centering gauge. And robot pick it up and move into the die.
the heated blank is loaded onto die, as you can see. And the blank is formed and quenched in the close of the die. Cooling speed is very important to achieve required strength. As shown in the graph, if cooling speed is slow, ferrite and bionite structure are produced during the cooling process. And we cannot get the target strength. To obtain the target strength, we need to make molten site structure fully and directly from austenite. And to do that, the cooling speed over a certain value is required. We are using 27 degrees per second. There are four key technologies to develop HF part. The process technology is the first, first step to analyze the availability of part production without crack or, and wrinkle. The second step is die design and manufacturing technology to make tool with review the process. The third step is die cooling technology to design and simulate cooling channel used for quenching heated, up, uh, heated panel. And the last step is production technology to install and optimize heating press and op automation equipment for HPF part production. Let's see the cooling technology, which is the only feature of HPF out of four key technologies. These are the cooling channel structures. Currently, most of cooling channel structures is applying the left method uh, water goes in from left side and flows through the cooling channel, which is connected to each insert steel and out to right side. The another way is type B. In this type, each steel has in and out for coolant for same cooling effect. However, in contrast to type A, it has better cooling effect on split area of steel. Unlike conventional stamping tool, in case of hot press forming tool, cooling simulation analysis is performed to determine the effect of the die, uh, designed cooling effect, I'm sorry, uh, designed cooling channel. Based on the analysis result, the cooling performance is compensated by design change. I will explain how to trim the HPF panel. As you, know, as you know, HPF panel has very high strength. Due to this, it is difficult to trim using conventional trim tool. So the most common way is using, uh, to use laser. This laser trim method is also capable to trim complicated three-dimensional shape. And it has high dimensional accuracy. On the other hand, the investment is high and it takes long cycle time. Here are some areas that HPF technology is being used or will be used in the future. Body parts requiring rigidity to protect the driver and the passengers from vehicle crash or roll over. And the parts for reinforcing the impact rigidity to uh, for chassis, suspension, and interior parts. The technologies applying HPF method is, uh, are as follows. Local softening. The local softening method, which partially differs in strength and elongation by applying a local heating method. And TWD method, using laser welding of materials of 
uh, having different thicknesses. And TRD method having different thicknesses in, in the production of coils. And there is a forming method using overlapped two sheets. We call it patch welded blank. In order to improve cooling effect, there is another special method called direct water cooling. Uh, in this process, coolant is flowing from cooling channel to outside of steel to cool down heated material directly. We have all of experiences except for TRD. This page shows our experiences for HPF part. We made all the dyes and we are producing the parts. Next, let's move on to tooling for aluminum alloy sheet. This is our content. Application trend uh, of aluminum alloy, uh, type and feature of aluminum alloy, and dye manufacturing technology for aluminum part. Xinyang's tools for aluminum part. As I mentioned previously, the environment uh, regulation is being reinforced. Therefore, every OEM is trying to develop lightweight beaker. I'm sorry. When we look at the application of alternative material for lightweight, yeah. use of aluminum takes up over 50%. Since the weight of aluminum is one third compared to steel's weight, it is more effective to reduce peak weight. The body of recently developed Ford F150 is made out of 100% aluminum. Um, Rolls Royce new Panton is also made out of 100% aluminum. In case of Jaguar XT, 75% aluminum. As you can see, these are several frames, fender, quarter, and trunk, and the door inners are made out of aluminum. Let's look at the material property of aluminum alloy. The elongation is only 60% of steel, which leads to low formability. And elasticity coefficient is only 30% of steel. This leads to much bigger spring bank than steel. Even though hardening exponent is 1.3 times higher than steel, since anisotropic coefficient is lower than steel, the formability is worse than steel. Also, when we look at the stress strain graph, the local deformation is less than steel. Because of this, crack occurs uh, in an instant. I'm going to explain about the formability and spring back of aluminum alloy. These images are a formability com uh, comparison after deep drawing between aluminum alloy sheet and steel sheet. As you shown, aluminum alloy sheet has a severe crack. This is because the elongation is lower than steel sheet. This graph shows the amount of spring back for each material according to bending radius. As you can see, the black one is aluminum. Uh, aluminum alloy sheet has two times more spring back than steel sheet. This is because elasticity coefficient is only 30% compared to steel. Also, during hemming, if section radius is small, crack occurs. This is caused by lower local deformation. From now on, I'm going to explain the difference between dye for steel sheet and dye for aluminum sheet. First of all, I will explain about the requirements of a part shape. In case of mild steel, it has good stretchability. For this reason, 
uh, deep drawing and cam forming are possible to form the complicate part shape. In contrast, aluminum alloy does not have good stressability. For this reason, part shape should be simple and shallow to prevent crack. And die structure should be simplified, not to use cam. In case of steel sheet, the spring bag is less than aluminum alloy sheet. For this reason, it is possible to machine after, uh, after welding. Therefore, it is OK to make punch and holder as one piece type. However, in, this, uh, in case of aluminum alloy sheet, due to high amount of spring bag, it is very difficult to machine after welding. Therefore, in order to machine repeatedly for compensation, punch and holder should be separated. If necessary, plate is inserted to recover the shortened height due to repetitive machining. Generally, in case of die for steel sheet, there is no issue in using scrap cutter to reduce the number of trim operations. Also, trim angle should be 90 degree to reduce burr. In contrast, if same method is used for aluminum alloy sheet, many sliver or chip will occur. If proceed next operation with sliver or chip on panel, sliver or chip mark will appear on panel. Therefore, scrap cutter does not be used even if the number of trim operation is increased. And if the trim angle has slope, sliver can be minimized. In case of die for a, a steel sheet, trim steel shape should be vertical. And through the clearance adjustment, bar and chip can be reduced. In contrast, in case of die for aluminum alloy sheet, sliver or chip should be minimized by applying a bit of slope shape by leaving the rest of the area by lowering the roughness of trim section surface and by considering polishing direction. In case of die for steel sheet, where plate is used to guide the pad at trim operation. In this case, even though the clearance is 0 0.5 between trim steel and pad, there is no issue on panel quality. In contrast, in case of die for aluminum alloy sheet, clearance between trim steel and pad should be tightly managed around 0 0.3 to hold the panel elaborately. Thus, accurate guide is needed for the pad, and guide post is used instead of wear plate. I will explain the plane shape for hemming. In case of die for steel sheet, the lower flange steel is etched machined to make section radius zero. In contrast, if the same method is applied to die for aluminum alloy sheet, orange peel after flange and crack after hemming will occur. In order to fix this issue, lower flange steel should have round section shape. Therefore, after hemming, the section radius will be larger than steel sheet. This page shows our experiences for aluminum parts. As you can see, we made many dies for various parts and for various customers. Thank you very much for your kind attention. So, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to say a big thank you to General Manager, Stamping Tool Engineering, Shenyang Company Limited, Mr. Wu Sik Jiong. Please get your hands together once again, ladies and gentlemen, for Mr. Wu Sik Jiong.
Thank you.